Awo, Shalom, Rastafari. Shabbat Shalom, Sanbet Salam. Last week's, um, we're about to move into a new week's uh, sabbatical, reading and feeding. As you might know, if you are practicing discipleship, you know, it's perfect discipleship, the teachings of His Majesty and the knowledge of the Scriptures, know that it was um, Vayishlach, what's known as Vayishlach, or what is called Bamarinya, was called Bamarinya Azizacho, Azizacho, and it contains Genesis 32 and 4 to Genesis uh, 36 and 43 from Torah, and the Nebiyat of the prophetical is Hosea 11 and 7, to Hosea 12, 12, and Obadiah chapter 1, verses 1 to verse 21. And in the Hadith Kidan, or the Burt Hadasha, which is the New Testament, um, Hebrews chapter 11, verses 11 to verse 20, and Mateo's Wengel, or Matthew's Gospel, chapter 26, verse 36 to verse 46. Now that's the sabbatical um, reading and feeding known as uh, Vayishlach or Vayishlach. And called Bamarinya, called in the Amharic um, Azizacho. Azizacho. Now, Azizacho means uh, he commanded them. He commanded them. Now, in the booklet, uh, at least book one for Genesis that we produce right here, which is uh, a summary of the prevailing views and teachings on Judaism, or of modern Judaism, concerning these various Torah portions, reading and feedings. And we use this as a basic uh, reference along with our uh, study Bible. Now, when we get into this, we're about to get to Shemot or Simoch. This is the eighth uh, portion, Vayishlach, and it's on page 435, 435. This book is over 500 pages, 435, but it's uh, well worth uh, volume for the information that it contains. And the Hebrew for Vayishlach, Vayishlach, or Vayishlach, is he sent. And it's the first word of this particular portion, reading and feeding, the eighth Torah portion, reading and feeding. Um, and um, in the annual Hebraic cycle of Torah portions, it's the eighth, and it constitutes, as we mentioned, Genesis chapter 32 and uh, 4 to uh, Genesis 36 and 43. And the Hebrews, Ionized Hebrews and, and religious or faithful Jews of other European and other extractions in the diaspora, we read it in the eighth Sabbath after the Simcha Torah, which is the joy, Ora Desita, uh, Desita Orit, um, generally in late November or December. Now, um, let's just review, because this week we mainly touched on uh, Georgis or St. George. But there's a beautiful and a sublime connection between what we touched on this week and what this particular portion was about. And we've touched on the basics in, in previous, um, either last year's cycle or, or the year before. We've gone into various different um, layers and various different um, um, matters that it contains, as well as trying to touch on any relevancy that we're able to perceive for our present situation in our present time. So, um, of the RSS, Rastafari Sabbatical Scrolls, number 8, um, Bamarinya, is known as Azizacho. Azizacho. Or, he commanded or we could say ordered, he ordered them, right? He commanded 
or ordered then as his answer. Now the Hebrew is uh, Yishlah or Yishlah. Now, so when we touch on the Hebrew, Hebraic before, we're going to touch on the Amharic at this present, at this present um, time. The Azazachu, he commanded, who, who, who is the he of this particular Torah portion reading and feeding? I know we're going about to go into the, into the, into the ninth uh, portion, this week's portion, but the Holy Spirit, let, let's go over a summary, just do justice to this. To fulfill all righteousness. Let's go over a summary of this particular reading and feeding. Now, this particular reading and feeding, in this kufal or portion of Parsha, Yaakov, Jacob is reconciled, or he reconciles with Esau, Esau, his brother, after wrestling with a man, the prince of Shechem, rapes uh, Dina. And her brothers sacked the city of Shechem in revenge. And in the family subsequent flight, Rachel or Rachel gives birth to Binyam or Benjamin, and she dies in, in childbirth. Rachel. And there are various prophetic elements that we find in the story that also go through to the very New Testament. So these readings and feedings that we study yearly and we go through yearly, not just for the Sabbath day, but are the sabbatical studies and meditations for the week to understand and to understand and comprehend the relation in the story, what, what, what is the story talking about, and also the prophetic resonances. The first one needs to get a basic idea, the basic, what we call um, the general education, the general education about this. There's three main parts to this. The three main parts is Yaakov's um, uh, reunion with Esau or Esau, his his brother, is the rape of uh, Dina. We have the rape of uh, Dina or Dinah, and uh, then we have uh, Yaakov's flight, Jacob's flight. Now it begins uh, 32 and. Uh, 32 and 4 to 36 and 43, these chapters here. So uh, 32 and um, 4, it begins, And he commanded them, saying, Thus shall ye speak to my Lord, Esau, thy servant, Yaakob, saith thus, I have sojourned with Laban and stayed there until now. And I have oxen and asses, flocks, men servants and women servants, and I have sent to my Lord that I may find grace in thy sight. And the messengers returned to Yaakov, saying, He came to thy, we came to thy brother Esau, and he cometh to meet thee with four hundred men with him. Then Yaakov, Jacob, was greatly afraid and distressed. And he divided the people that was with him and the flocks and herds and camels into two bands. Make a note of the word bands as well, two bands. And said, if Esau come to the one company and smite it, then the other company which is left shall escape. And Yaakov said, O oh God, my father Abraham, the God of my father Yishak, the Lord Yahweh, which said this to me, return to thy country and to thy kindred, and I will deal well with thee. I am not worthy of the least of all the mercies and of all the truth, which thou hast showed to thy servant. For with my staff I passed over this Jordanos, or Jordan, the descendant, and now I am become two bands. Deliver me, I pray thee, from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau, for I fear him. He admitted his, his fear of his brother. Least he will come and smite me and the mother with the children, and the mother with the children, which is a, which is a very um, poetic and even an ancient 
what, what we're learning here is 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 ancient spiritual technology. In other words, even describing the mother with the children, this is like an ancient the verbal hieroglyph in a sense. But it has great significance and it has great um, 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 resonance and relevance. Now, as we um, go for this particular chapter, we find that moreover, what, what, what happens is that Jacob, right, is that Jacob is left alone in verse 24 after he sends away the family and there he wrestled a man with him until the breaking of day. There he wrestles with a man. And now this is what's really significant about this because this wrestling is also a theme um, of, of, of contending, the, you know, the, 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 the contention in the sense contending with is to contend for the faith. Now, in the Islamic tradition, they call it jihad. We call it a, a, a ged, or a contesting or a contest, which is the struggle of a kadus, the struggle of a saint. And not just those people who the church say are saintly, but all true Christians in that sense are to, to make themselves holy even as he is holy, to make themselves kadus even as he is holy. So, even in the Nazarite vow, it says, if any man or woman seek to separate themselves, he shall be holy. So that word caduce being applied, separated, set apart, is where we get the idea of sainthood from the root, from the truth, from the scripture, from the word. But now in the world, there is a lot of um, um, misconception, a mistranslation among the Gentiles of who is worthy to be a saint, and they people decide, well, this one's a saint, that one I don't know. They do how many miracles, five or four, or whatever. That's nonsense. That's nonsense, scripturally speaking. So it, it, the, the, the idea of sainthood or kedus, the kedisina, needs to be understood in its root application, in its root act, and that means separating yourself. In other words, disciplining yourself. You understand? Is separating yourself to Yahweh, to his will. You understand? To his word. And that is what qualifies one as a saint. Even a, a baby saint or a saint in training, but they still are separated to the will of Jah. When we take this vow of a Nazarite, we too are separated to be holy or set apart. That's the root of Kedus at the very root. But then we have other words that come into the mix like um, consecrated, sanctified, and other kind of um, hallowed is also um, spoken of. We've touched on this elsewhere briefly, but now this wrestling with the angel is, is a very interesting part of the story because this comes before the reunion, you understand, the reunion um, with, his, with his brother. And in this better shit uh, book right here, we found something interesting in the classical rabbinic interpretation for chapter 32. We want to share this with you. The rabbis, or rabbis of the Midrash, they questioned the wisdom of Yaakov's decision to contact Esau in Genesis 32 and 4, the very portion which begins this um, sabbatical Torah portion reading and feeding the eighth one, right? Um, uh, Nachman ben uh, Samuel, he compared the decision to waking a robber sleeping on a path to tell him of danger. This is how one Rebbe or Rabbi compared it. Now the Rebbe, they envisioned that Elohim, Baruch Hu, blessed be he, had asked Yaakov, Esau was going his way, yet you sent to him? In other words, Esau was doing his own thing, but yet you sent to him? Question. This is how they envisioned when they reasoned, you know, when they reasoned on this Torah portion. Now, the Rebbe's of the Midrash, they deduced that the, quote, messengers, end quote, of Genesis 32 and 4 were angels, or we can say were alien, extraterrestrials. They were angels. They were, they were, um, Melaict, you understand? Um, the Rebbe's uh, reason that if, as Genesis uh, Rabbah, Rabbah 59 and 10 taught, an angel escorted 
Aliazar, Ali Azar, Eliza, who was just a servant of the house, how much more would angels have accompanied Yaakov? In other words, if one angel or, or if an angel had escorted Eliza, who was Abraham, Father Abraham's servant, then how much more uh, a Yaakov or Jacob, who was the beloved, who was the, the Dodi, the Dodi or the dude, he was the dude, he was the Dawit. That, that means beloved in the Hebrew, dude, Dodi, means beloved. And I know there's a connection with Dodi, Fayyid, and, and Princess Diana, and Diana is mentioned in here too. So maybe somebody can uh, see something in that. But how much more? So the Rebbe um, Hana ben Hanina, he reasoned that if five angels appeared to Hagar, who was just Sarah's handmaid, how much more would angels appear to Yaakov? So if five appeared to Hagar and she was just the handmaid of Sarah, then how much more would appear to Yaakov, who is like the ear? He's like the warash, the ear of the house. And Rebbe uh, Janai, uh, Yanai, he reasoned that if three angels met Yosef, met Joseph, counting the three uses of man in Genesis chapter 37, verse 15 to verse 17, and he was the youngest of the ancestors of the 12 tribes of the Beta Israel, how much more will angels, would angels meet Yaakov, who was the father of all the 12, according to the Genesis uh, Rabbah 75 and 4. Now, Judah ha Nasi. He once directed uh, Rebbe Yafes to write a letter in Judah's name to Emperor Antoninus. Uh, Rebbe Yafes, he wrote, quote, From Judah, the prince, to our sovereign, the Emperor Antoninus, end quote. Judah read the letter, tore it up, and wrote, quote, From your servant Judah to our sovereign, the Emperor Antoninus, end quote. Now, Rebbe Afis, he remonstrated that Judah treated his honor too lightly. Judah replied that he was not better than our ancestor, who in Genesis 32 and 5 sent a message saying, quote, Thus says your servant Yaakov, Jacob, Genesis Rabbah 75 and 5. Now, another rabbi. Uh, Jacob Bar Idi, he pointed out a contradiction between God's promise to protect Jacob in Genesis 28 and 15 and Jacob's fear in Genesis 32 and 8. Rabbi Yaakov explained that Yaakov feared that some sin might cause him to lose the protection of God's promise, according to the Babylonian Talmud, Barakot 4a Sanhedrin 98b. Now, Rabbi Eliezer, he taught that uh, Abdiyu, Abdiyal, Obadiah, hid 50 of 100 prophets of God in a cave in 1 Kings 18 and 4 because he learned the lesson of dividing his camp. Remember we talked about the bands, make a note of that, the bands, because um, Obadiah now learned this lesson from the scriptures and from Jacob of dividing his camp dividing his, his squad, his, his, his troops, his band, from Jacob's actions in Genesis 32, verses 8 to 9. Now, uh, uh, Rebbe Abahu, however, he said that it was because the cave could not hold more than only, could only hold 50. You know, this is how they, they reason on, but the, the freedom of reasoning on the scripture to derive wisdom out of it is something that we as the ones lost but now found Beta Israel have lost. But the sabbatical time and sabbatical studies should allow us that, that, that opportunity to explore the Spirit of God and, and the wisdom of the Spirit of God as well as of the scriptures. Now, Rabbi Yane, he had taught that when people expose themselves to danger, and are saved by miracles, 
it is deduced from their merit, and so they end up with less merit to their credit. Now, Rabbi Hanin cited Genesis 32 and 11 to prove this, reading, Yaakov to say to God, quote, I am become diminished, that is, I have less merit to my credit, by reason of all the deeds of kindness and all the truth that you have shown to your servant. Rabbi Hana ben Hanina taught that the man, the man, quote, end quote, who wrestled with Yaakov in Genesis 32 and 25 was Esau's guardian angel. So one rabbi taught that this man that Jacob wrestled with was actually Esau's guardian angel and that Yaakov alluded to this when he told Esau later on after, after he reconciled with him in Genesis 33 and, and 10, quote, For as much as I have seen your face, as one sees the face of Elohim, of, of God or the gods, and you were pleased with me, how the angel gave him a barakot or a barakat, in other words. Now, Tractite 7, or Chapter 7 of Tractite uh, Hulim in the Mishnah to Sefta, and the Babylonian ta Talmud, they interpret the laws of the prohibition of the sinew of the hip. You remember the sinew of the hip? The, the part that the angel had, had, had um, which is the sciatic nerve, or what they call the Gida Aha Nasha, the sinew in Genesis 32 and 33. Um, the Mishnah taught this, that the prohibition against eating the sciatic nerve in Genesis 32 and 33, is enforced both within the land of Israel and outside it, both during the existence of the uh, Beit Mekdes or the temple and after it, and with respect to both consecrated as well as unconsecrated animals, those animals that are set aside, holy animals, and ones that are not. It applies to both domesticated and wild animals. You get the, the link, holy, unholy domesticated, being of the house, and wild, not being of the house, and to both the right and the left hip, but it does not apply to birds. Now, I thought this was interesting why, when I read it. Let me just share this with you. Why does it apply to birds? Well, it doesn't apply to birds because they have no spoon-shaped hip as the muscles upon the hip bone or the, or the, or the, the femur, the femur of a bird lie flat and are not raised and convex like those of the cattle. It also applies to a live fetus found in a slaughtered animal. Although Rabbi Rabbi uh, Judah said that it does not apply to a fetus. And the live fetus fat is permitted, they say. But all thanks and praise to King of Kings and his Christ that find I that this is a lesson to be learned, but that is are basically debtors, and we should be about life the way the Almighty intended from the very beginning. The law here of, uh, concerning animals was not the Almighty's original intent, but a concession for stumbling man or fallen man. And the law of fact being permitted, so Rabbi Meyer, he taught that one should not trust butchers to remove the sciatic nerve. But the sages, others taught that one may trust butchers to remove the sciatic nerve, as well as the fact that Leviticus 3 and 17 and 7 and 23 um, uh, forbids. Now, what's up with this? There's more, much more to this. But um, like we say, we don't want to, uh, and I'm going to say bore ones, but, but let's get to one of the main parts that we wanted to get to in this particular, uh, we kind of call it a little bit of a catch-up on a certain level to the previous week's sabbatical Torah portion, reading and feeding concerning Adesacha, and he commanded that. Because there's much that we can learn from this, but what we want to focus on right here is, is Jacob, or is Yaakov. So we know it is, it is uh, Jacob here, right? And it is this way in the Amharic and the Gutters, and this means Yah is O B. So Yah is O. Yah is O. Como say has three parts to it. It's a trinity. Yah is O. 
Now, Jacob was to have Jacob was to have a new name, a new name. So this is also on the new name as well. And that new name we know as Israel. Obama and the goods as Israel. Similar similar to the to the to the English in the basic in the basic uh sense. Little tilde right there, I think a Karen or something to that, that'll make it a A a A sound. Not just a S sound, not just a A sound, but an A sound for the contraction of Chayil in the Hebrew, which becomes El, which means power, power or strength. That's why what we read concerning Jacob at a particular place that's known as Peniel. You understand? But let, let's first, Bamaringa, uh, uh, I think it's T Ni. L, right? Or Peniel. Peniel. Some say it's the Peniel or the Pineal. It's the Pineal gland that we are talking about. So for this, we want to bring into um, um, exhibit, as, as they would say, bring into exhibit um, the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary. And let's look up uh, Peniel. Peniel. Or Peniel, 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 or Pineal, or Pineal. Let's bring a Pineal into this for a moment. Because we find in the first part of this Torah portion, reading and feeding, it's, it's, it's going to tell us about Jacob and sending to reconcile his brother, dividing his camp. So all that is like even military strategic planning, so we can learn some strategic planning from the wisdom of our ancestors. But now, this, this wrestling with this angel takes on more metaphysical, and even on a certain level, extraterrestrial or interdimensional kind of dynamics. But there's a, there's a connection with the reality of the knowledge that we know today, even with the connection to the pineal gland, this particular pineal gland, right? But now, in this portion right here, we find that Jacob was left alone, and when he saw that he prevailed not, they said, okay, he was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of day, until the breaking of day, the coming forth of the day. Notice that connection of breaking of day is connected with the uh, medu or metu inter, or the metuneter, the metuneter, as some would say, as the part im heru, part im heru, the coming forth by day, the breaking of day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh. That's the sciatic, the sciatic nerve. And the hollow of Yaakov's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. So we're also learning a little krav maga, you understand, or krav wuga there. The fighting technique that that even in the ancient times things like so-called um, uh, tai chi or things like martial arts kung fu it's not like these things were unknown so just, that's also another layer that often is avoided or thought out of mind but has to be put within the context but of course this was the ancient Kurub Wuga which they call Krav Maga this particular fighting right here, because what he did was wound, the angel wounded, you understand, Yaakov, or this, quote, man, end quote, because he's, he's called a man right here. Verse 26, it says, and he said, let me go for the day breaketh. So this particular man wanted to go because it was getting daylight, and he wanted to be out of there. And he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. Now, it's interesting. this is a very curious thing. He's wrestling with this man. He's all alone. He doesn't want to let the man go until the man bless him, until you get a blessing from him. And he said to him, what is thy name? So this man now said to him, okay, like, what's your name? And he said, Yaiko. He said, Jacob, or the Yaiko. And also, Bamarinya and the good is, is Ukabe. Ukabe. That's a link we want to make, but we don't have space up here right now to make it. And he said, 
thy name shall be called no more Yaiko. Your name shall not be called Yaiko, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men, and has prevailed. You have power with God and with men, and has prevailed, or in that sense, it is an overcomer. You are a overcomer. So now, here that we find that Jacob was given, Jacob was given his, um, we can say, his new name. He was given his new name, Bamarinya, Alawum, Alawum, Kangadi Wadiya Simih, Israela Yibalimji, Yaikov Aibal. You you wrestle, you fight with with men, with God and with men, and you're a winner. You're a winner, you're a prevailer, you're an overcomer. Now, as we move forward in this, verse 29, and Jacob asked him and said, Tell me, I pray thee, thy name. Now, Jacob wants to know, okay, what's this? quote, man, end quote, name. And he said, Wherefore is it that thou askest after my name? And he blessed him there. Now notice something. This is, this is, this is very interesting. He asked him, What's your name? He says, Why do you want to know my name? And then the Bible says, He blessed him there. Are, are you putting this together like a scene? I mean, imagine theater or theater for a moment. Put this together as a scene. All right, he, he, he just says, no more of your name be called this, but you be called this. No longer Yaakov, but Israel, right? And then he gives him a blessing, uh, gives him a word that, that with God and with man, you wrestle, you know what I'm saying, and have prevailed and is a winner and an overcomer, like Moa and Bethlehem, Negeta, Yehuda, the conquering line, the tribe of Judah. You're an overcomer, right? Then he says, okay, what is your name? Yaakov want to know to the man, what's your name? And the man says, like, why do you want to know my name? And then it says, he blessed him. So which one was the blessing? Was the name change the blessing, or did the name change precede or anticipate the blessing? Understand that. Did the name change precede and anticipate the blessing? But here's what we learned about um, blessings. In fact, we were going through one of our favorite one of our favorite personal kind of books or books that we like to kind of just read because there's so much, this, this, this uh, research, August Dillman, August Dillman's uh, Ethiopic Grammar. And we was going through it the other day, and they went over the word uh, baraka, baraka, which is the root of uh, uh, blessing, you know, baruch, baraket, barakot, so forth and so on, um, from baraka. But baraka means to bless by bending knee. You know the Tebow win, all the stuff that's been in the news like this this week about these students, the, you know, the Tebow and where they're like on one on one knee like like the old time when knights, you know, when knights would get you know, when knights would get blessed, they'd be on one knee like that, you know, Tebow and they call it Tebow and today because of this guy who be praying this this athlete, somebody Tebow, you know what I'm saying, who be praying before he, he go um playing. He pray before he play, showing reverence and honor to God. But he goes on one knee. What most don't understand about the word um barakat and barakat, it both means to increase, like abarakat uh, means to to have multitude much of something, like an increase of something. But the root baraka, when we get to the goodness, means to bless by bending knee. In other words, it's that same position that, that we have in different, whatever the different orders is, by one going on their knee. Almost like how um, people uh, propose, in a sense. You know, to to wed a woman, some men they go on one knee and they get on your knee, on your knee, and would you take me as my? But really, that one knee, the act of blessing, is connected with the bowing. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess with the bowing of the knee and the opening of the mouth. 
That's the connection right there with blessing. So we wanted to add that part about barakah there because you might just know, okay, the word bless means blessing. But now connect this with the story of Yaakov because what happened with Yaakov? Yaakov's uh, sinew, his sciatic nerve in his hip was pulled out, was, was brought out of joint. So this must have caused him to, 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 to fall down on one knee. Think about it for a moment. So when he asked the angel, what is your name? And he says, wherefore you want to know my name? And he blessed him there because he was already on one knee because of that sciatic. You understand? He had sciatica because of that sciatic right there. Because it says in verse 29 now demonstrates this when we understand the goodness or the inner Afro-Shemitic etymology to the word, the whole context and clarity of the story becomes um, um, multifold, multiplied, we're blessed. And Yaakov called the name of the place. Now, Jacob, at this point, he calls the name of the place what? Peniel or Peniel. He calls it Peniel. The pineal, perhaps, but Peniel. For I have seen God or Elohim face to face. I've seen Elohim face to face, and my life is preserved. And my life is continued. My life is, is saved, is preserved. I've seen God face to face. Verse 31, and he passed over Penuel. Now, something interesting goes on in the King James Bible. We just wanted to look this up. If you look in your King James Bible in the Schofield, you'll see that first it's Peniel, then it has Penuel. Penuel. If you notice, there's two different words. There's one Peniel, right? The way we have it spelled right there, P-E-N-I-E-L. And then in the next sentence, it has P-E-N-U-E-L. Now, people say, oh, well, that's just, uh, that's just a, a, a typo. Is it really a typo? Is it really a typo? Let's look at this for a moment. In the English, it, it, it says that, it's not a typo. You understand? It basically says that there's these two different spellings. Now, Bamarinya, Bamarinya, we actually have the same spelling, but the English gives a little distinction. I guess the, the way the Jews pointed the vowels, you understand? They said, well, it could be Pinu L in a more plural or Pini L in a more singular, subjective. So we'll. We don't know exactly. We'll put both of them. So we, but when you go to the second one, Penuel, it says in the meta C Peniel. So we're gonna go with Peniel right here. So it says that and Yaakov and Yaakov called the name. Okay, yeah, and he passed over Penuel, and the sun rose upon him, and he halted. He halted upon his thigh. He halted upon his thigh. Therefore the children, verse 32, Therefore the children of Israel eat not of the sinew which shrank, which is upon the hollow of the thigh to this day, because he touched the hollow of Yaakov's thigh in the sinew that shrank. Now, when you see the proper context of the Bible, you must see Africa to understand the inner the inner idea of this, this is very African, because this happened to our patriarch. You understand? It wasn't the command of God, don't eat this part, but it's what the people did because of the whole connection, you understand, with what happened to their ancestor. You understand? What happened to the link with the ancestors is a very afro shemitic thing, a very African thing. So even to comprehend what's going on here, we must link it with our own vine and our own fig tree and must draw water, the water of life, out of our own cistern, you know what I'm saying, our own drinking gourd. But now that we completed that reading about Peniel, this is what we mainly want to focus on, even though there's other elements that we could still focus on, like Shechem. Shechem means a burden. 
and in Jeremiah chapter 23 that we were doing a teaching on earlier, we talked about the whole burden, the burden of the Lord, how the Lord said, don't say a burden. The Shechem or Shechem, Shechem means burden at the same time. So this is kind of a key, a kind of an interesting connection about what happened at the, at the place called Shechem. You understand? Know and what was connected, the whole circumcision incident that was connected with it and the rape of the the sister of the Bani Israel. So we would stop and think, even as black men, how many of our daughters, sisters, mothers, and wives have been raped? But then we have not, because we don't even know we're Israelites. If we're Israelites, you understand, and we look into our own root and truth. What would happen to that, the village or the town of the rapists? Think about it. You see, so there's much benefit in, in having our, our restored, being born again, being regenerated, coming out, thinking differently, in other words. That's what repent means, to think differently. Steve Jobs had that right. Steve Jobs, think differently. But here for Iniel, for Iniel, it says, turn toward God. It means turn toward God. It means face of God with the uh, presence of God, within the presence of God, countenance of God, another word for face, vision of God, from seeing one's face, you see the vision, recognition of God, of God in the sense of Elohim, beholding of God, understanding, the understanding of God. So all of that's embedded in this in the L in the Penni L and the Penu L. The Penu, Fana, Fene. Then we can also go in the Hebraic, the Fana. The Fana is a torch or a lamp in the Gutters. The Fana. So we can have a, also a link within that as well, an illumination, to say, of God, an illumination of the true God and the truth. Now, it says the place where Yaakov wrestled with the angel, and prevail, where his name was changed to Israel, quote, and Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, for saith he, I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. Now, here's the metaphysical of it, and this is why we find it so very um, interesting, even within its uh, Kiduski Argus connection, since that is one of the main themes that we have been reasoning on over the past week or so. I'm considering the heavenly revelations as it was. Um, the metaphysical is the inner realization of divine presence. That, that this name signifies the inner realization. You might know it, you may have some, some, some notion of it, but when you come to that realization of something, it's yours. When you so Yaakov now came to this realization, you understand? It was realized. It's no more guess. Was that it? Was that that? Uh, could it be? It was none of that. He came to a realization. The realization it, within the innermost of his inner sense of having met Elohim, having met God face to face, and of having succeeded through prayer in attaining the divine favor and barakat. So the act of prayer is intimately connected with the Peniel and the Penuel, but don't forget the pineal. Don't forget what the significance of the pineal, which is all connected with that third eye. And when Christ said, let your eye be singular, let your eye be singular, That had been sought. So the favor and the blessing is what was sought in the idea of turn toward Elohim, face of Elohim, uh, within the presence of Elohim, within the presence of, the, of Elohim, uh, vision of Elohim, recognition of Elohim, beholding of Elohim, Baruchu. Now it's at Peniel that Yaakov's name was changed to Israel. Because as it was explained to him, now this is as it was explained to him by this, quote, man who now has become recognized 
as an angel, as a melaach. And also look in our history too, that connection with the angel of the Lord, even in Dr. Malaku Emmanuel Bayan. But here it says, at Peniel, the name of Yaakov was changed to Israel because, as it was explained to him, quote, thou hast striven, thou hast wrestled with Elohim, with God, or even by extension, the gods, and with men, and has prevailed, end quote. Then it says, had power with. Had power with is now the marginal idea. Now, the idea of prevail is hayale or ayale. And why is that important? Because from the from the good is the foundation of the Amharic Hayala is the is the um, tricontinental root of El of El, which is the Hebraic for God, which has at its root power or power or strength or strong one. So the name El as an Elohim and Hayal as in Haile Selassie, is from one and the same root, but the root we only discover through the Afro-Shemitic, the Gutiz language. That's what we have, Ayala, Hayala, and it helps explain the cryptic matters in the biblical, in, in, the, in the biblical, like Ha'el and certain names, and Ayala, which means a hind or Midakwa, which is another kind of connection. But now, when we look through... Um, the next uh, penu L, it just says, "Turn to God, face of God, within the presence of God." And then it names there were there was a place named Peniel where we're talking about. There was a man of the tribe of Judah named Peniel or Penuel in First Chronicles four and four. There's a son of uh, Shashak of the tribe of Benjamin who is named Penuel in First Corinthians eight and twenty five. And so most people will say, well, that must be it, but it's not. What's the next definition after Peniel or Peniel? It's Panina, the name Panina. I'm sure you have some more room up here. Panina, Panina, P-E-N-I-N-N-A-H, Panina. Why is that important? What is the root of this? The root of this name, Panina, is pearl, a pearl had a grandma named Pearl. Red coral, a red coral, a precious stone, a gem, or a jewel. Are, are you getting this? Are you getting now the pineal gland connection? The pineal gland is that pearl, that pearl of great price. Remember Christ's parable? That red coral, that red coral, that precious stone, that gem or that jewel, which is the consciousness. So we can see now the link and the connection because that's where one wrestles with God. Think about it. You wrestle with God in your, in your heart and your mind. You know, you wrestle. God says this, but I like to do that. Uh, God says this, but I, I don't know. I don't agree with it, but I know it's the right thing. And, and so you're wrestling. The crucifixion takes place at the place of the skull. The place of the skull, you understand? The, the, the place of the skull is the mind. You understand? It is the brain, but really what's going on is in the mind. And the physical part, the resonance, the place in the physical being is the pineal gland. The connection with the pineal gland. This is what's important about this particular sabbatical reading and feeding. So the second closest word from the biblical actually gives us actually gives us um, some insight into the the root part. Most translators say the face of God. They say the face of God, the face of God. But the real key to understanding it is the related words in the Hebrew and the Shemitic, the Afro-Shemitic. And Panina is the next related um, word. And then when you go to 1 Samuel, let's just check 1 Samuel 1 and 2. Let's go to 1 Samuel 1 and 2. We want to really see what it looks like, um, um, Bamarinya, 1 and 2. So Metaphe Samuel Kedamawi, 1 and 2. Well, who let him, um, Misto Chenebaruti, Andi, two, 
sim ahana yehule tenyai yitum sim fanana it says fanana nebrele fanana malijocha nebruat le hana gin lich ad nebratim ad nebratim so it's some hana in the bible and um elkana and Panina was the other the other woman or the other wife. He had two wives. You understand? And Hannah, she would have a child and that child would be the prophet Samuel or Samuel the prophet. But now what's interesting is now we find that the P can also be pronounced, the P sound can also be pronounced as the F sound. So here it's Fanana. Fanana. Now Fanana or Panina, according to the Hebrew According to the Hebrew, let's go further than this. She was one of the wives of Elkanah the Ephraimite. The other wife was Hannah, mother of Samuel the prophet, 1 Samuel 1 and 2. But now, here's the metaphysical. Check out the metaphysical implication of this, the spiritual. Metaphysically, it's the soul, the suke, the psyche, or the nes, the nefesh, if you will, lifted up in individual consciousness and unified so it is it, it signifies the pineal signifies the lifting up of the soul in the individual in the indivisible dual see the egyptians had it right the individual dual you understand the in the spirit and soul the individual the dual um or the individual consciousness and unified with the understanding or we would say the overstanding, according to Rastafari revelation, that man's inheritance is from Elohim, that our true inheritance is not really from men and people. Our true inheritance is from Elohim. That while he does not own anything selfishly, you see, Baal and Baal, as in Balaam, signifies the selfish ownership or husbandry you understand and therefore the belaam or the belaim you know the belaam are the owners when you hear about balaam and the you know the fa the, the fathers or the husbands the husbandmen notice christ he gives a parable about the husbandmen and that child who should be reverent who is rastafari but when we look right here Man does not own anything selfishly, yet all that the father has is his. And that signifies now the husband's name in the, in the story of uh, Penina and Hannah. Elkanah, Elkanah, or Elkanah, Kana as in, as in acquisition, where it says uh, Kanae, he is a jealous or a zealous. He is zealous, but this also has the idea of acquisition, in a sense, of acquiring, acquisition. So the union of the soul, the psyche, with this understanding, with this level of, of understanding, makes of the soul or causes the individual to realize that the soul is a precious jewel a precious jewel, a pearl, a precious stone. Thus, there is brought forth increase of good, uh, the, the increase of good in thoughts, in thoughts and in ideas. This is why in the story of, uh, in Samuel, the Metaph of Samuel, Panina or Fanana, why she had many sons and daughters in that sense. Because it now signifies this, um, this bringing forth in certain consciousness that through the story we can now understand that this was a different relationship that she had that Hannah as of yet did not have that. You see what I'm saying? Not saying that she was bad, but it's, it's a, that, that grace, even the name is kind of interesting. It's another a kind of a whole other level. We want to focus on um, Panina or Fanana, Fanana right here. Remember we said that that Peniel and, 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 and the Pini or the Pini actually is related to the Fina, Fana as we have in the Ethiopic which is, is used for torch. 
as a torch, a light, an illumination. So this light now, it's like in the old cartoons, whenever the character, you know, would get a bright idea, what, what, how would they show it? They would show it as a light bulb, either in their head or above their head. And when you understand the relationship of the Iniel and the metaphysical place of the pineal and its relation to the true hypostasis or the akal of man, which is beyond the shiga, beyond the physical body. We're now on the spiritual and the interdimensional level, the true metaphysical level. But the key connection is the pioneer. And the link is with that name. That's why in Revelation, when it talks about the new name, that ones would have a new name and the white stone and that stone which is in them would have that new name. It's a certain consciousness. It's also a Shem. And the Shem, if you look that up, Shem, in some of the teachings out there, but based on the word, a Shem is also considered by some to be a rocket ship or a vehicle, a spiritual vehicle. Now, we're not going to go into that technology right now because the first thing is the consciousness of this basic level, you see. But as we study these um, Torah portion readings and feeding, just when one thinks like, hey, I understand, I know what it's all about. That's the Jacob, he wrestles, rah, 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 but you're not studying it, see. And therefore, if you don't study to show yourself approved, if you don't like Nothing wagered, nothing earned. You know, if you don't put anything into it, you won't get anything out of it. So in this additional study, just of this one part of this particular Torah portion that contains about three chapters, just this one part, about less than ten verses, has this gem, has this pearl. Now, from the Ethiopic perspective, this pearl is connected with the Kibra, uh, the, the, the Kibra Negist. You know what I'm saying? Or the Kibra Nagast, actually. It's connected with the Kibra Nagash or the Kibra Nagash, but the Kibra Nagast. It's connected with the, the idea of the pearl. So when we read the, the Kibra Nagast, it tells us of this pearl. Now, what we have to do is recognize its true root. Many have maybe lost that. Even many Ethiopians, they understand the pearl. They understand their, their tradition and, and the Kibra Neges, but don't really understand the larger significance within the teaching of the Word of God that we have here in uh, Genesis, because both names are applied to the nation. Additional level that now... The, how how the, the the name thing is so important because both of the names Jacob Yaakov and Israel they apply to the nation that descended from Jacob but let's understand this when used characteristically Jacob or Yaakov is the name of the natural prosperity of Abraham Yishak and Jacob. So when we talk about when you're reading in the Bible, sometimes Yahweh, he likes to use Jacob. Through the prophets, he'll say Jacob, and the CEO seed of Jacob, O house of Jacob. But at other times, he will speak of seed of Israel, house of Israel. And one may think it's just poetical in a sense. It is poetical, but beyond that, there's a metaphysical understanding. And part of that metaphysical understanding is revealed right here in the Schofield um, Bible study, um, the, 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 the Garge, or the, the footnote, when it says, when used characteristically, Jacob is a name for the natural prosperity of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now, Israel is used differently. Israel is the spiritual part. The spiritual part of the nation is Israel. So, uh, Lemisale, for example, we who recognize Rastafari revelation, we are that new Israel. We are the Beta Israel. While our lost sheep folk, the black people who don't know themselves and who don't want to know themselves, but who are, in a sense, of Israel, but not Israel, qualify under Ya'ikov. So they're part of the natural part, but not part of the spiritual, not part of the spiritual part of the nation. Now, it has a further note to Isaiah uh, 9 and 8, where it speaks about the word, the word, the Kaab. The word was sent to all the people. 
signified by Jacob. Where it says the word was sent to Jacob. So it's helping us to even interpret this um, metaphysical, symbolic, logic, or lang language where the word was sent to all the people, which is Yaakov or Jacob, but it lighted, but it lighted, but it lighted, in other words, it illuminated. See the connection of Fana from the goodness? It lighted or it illuminated. It was like a torch upon Israel. That means that it was comprehended by the spiritual part of the people. But the natural part of the people, it like went over their heads because it's spiritual, it's heavenly. You understand? And they're earthly. They're on their belly like the serpent crawling on its belly. But those who are the spiritual part are like birds of the air. They're able to, like the angels, they're able to receive it. So it lights upon them. But then there's a further um, teaching on Israel that was in our, one of our previous Torah portions in Genesis 12 and 2, verses 2 to 3, and Romans um, chapter 11, verse 26, and it's contained in this um, Schofield uh, summary, and just scrolling forward right there, the summary is very interesting. This is the, the summary right here is, is a whole additional um teaching, and perhaps we will present that, the summary right here, but if you have the Schofield Study Bible or want to see it, you can go to www.lojsociety.org, and you can download the Schofield uh, uh, Study Bible, the Reference Bible for free. You can use it on your mobile device, your computer, or your particular um, digital interactive Android, whatever your, you know, whatever your choice is or whatever you got, you can use it. Um, basically, you can read it and utilize it as a, as a book. If you want to print it, it's a lot. It's probably easy to just obtain, purchase a copy, and if you want more information, it's at the website. But the summary of Israel contains the fourfold mission of Israel. And it's very important, the Beta Israel, and we as the Beta Israel, the once lost but now found, Beta Israel, recognize and know both our names. But what's in a name? In that name, Israel is a fourfold mission. So when one asks us, well, what is the mission? You know, what is the goal of even the Lion Jew Society, which is one of the mansions in my father, our father, and the God and father of our black Lord and Savior, Shua HaMoshiach's house. One needs to understand and comprehend what the fourfold mission is of Israel is in prophecy. But the foundation is right here in this week's Torah portion reading and feeding and in Genesis chapter 32. So there's more to come, my brothers and sisters, and please continue doing your studies, my fellow disciples, and and continue to help support this ministry with your prayers, your tithes, your goodwill offerings, but mainly study and show yourself approved, brothers and sisters, and get prepared for the times that we're in, but more importantly, the times that we're about to be in, in a very short time. So I love you, brothers and sisters, because you love studying our Father's Word and the testimony of our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach. And until we meet again, Shalom Ras Teferi.